So we got Mars, the planet of passion, um, intentions, aggression, anger, frustration, but also motivation as well in the sign of Libra, which is 180 degrees from where it likes to be at. So, you know, this is going to take our passions and put them in a situation where we're going to need to utilize the energy of Libra in order to make things right in that area of our life. So what it's going to look like a lot of time, like, or at this moment in time, is going to look like you needing to make your passions relatable or find ways to relate to certain aspects of yourself in order to rectify or smooth over different avenues you were taking when it came to approaching those passions or even down to certain things that trigger your anger and frustration finding new ways to facilitate this emotion throughout your own body but it's going to take you focusing and creating initiating new ways to think about the different things that you're passionately involved in what up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Dave B. Watching Dave B on TV, where we go beyond the everyday bullshit that people be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis, and we're breaking down um, this little transit. So we, we got uh, Mars at zero degrees right now in Libra. So, you know, coming off of this moon, uh, this Mars energy from Virgo, Mars and Virgo was putting us in an aspect where we might have been able to get away with putting our blinders on. We was able to sit with ourselves, internalize and organize our passions, um, everything that it came to, to, you know, what we were passionately involved in and in, in the pursuit of as far as our intentions and what we're motivated by. These things were in a space that we had enough uh, awareness on how to organize these things, how to create a step by step process for our goals to be achieved. Um, like I was saying before, we could get away with putting our blinders on, right? But see, if you did too much of that energy, you might find yourself in a situation now where you don't have anyone around you who is either willing to help out or support what your passions are, uh, what you're passionate about, or you haven't created enough energy with other individuals to even have that conversation. You know what I'm saying? So if you've been utilizing the energy, because a lot of things kind of play out into this Mars energy. And a lot of this is what we discussed in the Each One Teach One program. So, um, you know, um, a lot of this energy comes from back when Mars was in Leo. And it was the first energy to hit that Leo energy. And it was all about setting the stage for our passions. You can look at previous videos and see us talking, uh, see me talking about that. Um, it was about setting the stage for our passions. But we had to set it when we didn't have anything around us to use as a representation, right? And we were even getting hit with a lot of that Lilith energy back then. Now, for those of you who don't know or are new, maybe haven't heard the last couple of videos, Lilith is an energy that deals with our deep embarrassments, deep fear, deep rooted fear, things that trigger us to, you know, avoid some of the more harder things for us to do in this lifetime. It's, it's, it's almost like that space where we just don't want to experience that again. It's a, it's a deep rooted fear. So um, on a on a global level, right, the current transit, because everybody has Lilith somewhere in their chart and that'll determine the area of life that they might have uh, deep rooted fear in and also the energy in which it's coming through. For instance, if, if, if it's in fire, you have Lilith in a fire sign that deals with expression being seen in certain ways. Um, also your own individuality or things that deal with you and your identity. If it's in water, it's dealing with connection, emotional, you know, trust even, you know, um, also the fear of maybe not being cared for, not being nurtured, not, you know, all these different things. Air, it deals with you and your ability to communicate. Maybe you don't believe in your ability to be intellectual or don't believe your intelligence. You, you overthink things because you don't want to be wrong mentally or you go through a lot of situations in which you're confused by the information others give you or just relationships in general give you certain fears and anxieties that don't necessarily need to be there. Also earth, that could be fear when dealing with material things, fear dealing with or, um, you know, incompetence when it comes to how to manage your money, your time or your resources, very physical things, but they matter just as much, you know, to you as an individual based upon, you know, what your, what your energies are. But if you have Lilith in these different areas, that's going to be something that kind of fears you or freaks you out. You know, I said fears you, but something that you fear is something that freaks you out or that you don't want to be embarrassed in that area. So, again, Earth is like don't want to be embarrassed when it comes to money. Air, don't want to be embarrassed when it comes to your intellectual abilities. Water, don't be want to be embarrassed as far as where you give your emotions to or what you feel. Fire, don't want to be embarrassed when it comes to what you show. 
So um, Lilith is currently in uh, Virgo. And so what I what I say, the significance of Mars reaching Libra is it's the first energy to really um, make its way out of that Lilith circumference to break free from that uh deep-rooted fear anxiety and embarrassment that we might have been feeling um especially around the new moon in, in leo see the new moon in leo was highly significant because it was the turning point it was to see the, the where you got to experience a time where with that rooted fear that with with that embarrassment with that anxiety are you still willing to go forward with what it is that you set out as your intentions or what it, where you actually where is this who you truly are because that's the thing right now if 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 you are who you say you are a little bit of embarrassment not going to um deter you from doing what you know you need to do if you are who you say you are a little bit of fear isn't going to stop you from putting out what you need to put out and even if you do in your in the back of your mind say well this is what I really want to do I was just whatever excuse you make up as to why you didn't go forward with it that's on you you know and that's something that's a discussion you have to have you with with you and God you know what I'm saying because that's not that you need to know in your own life right now a harsh truth you're not ready for what it is that you say you you are uh that you want and um you know it's nothing wrong with that but um you just got to be real with what it is you know what i'm saying and i say it's nothing wrong with it because you know we're all in different places in our journey but you need to be real about what you're prepared for and what you're not prepared for and if you can't even get over a little bit of fear all that shit you think you finna get out of, out of whatever dream you're chasing yeah you, you're not ready for that and you damn near don't you, you damn sure don't deserve it you know what i'm saying and I'm not saying that from an egotistical point of me looking down on you. I'm saying this is what you already know in your heart, which is why, you know, you the first to either blame somebody else and put the accountability on someone else or, you know, you know, just say fuck it. And then all oh, it is what it is and stuff like that. Well, however you cope with that. But the, the honest truth is you're not ready for it. You don't deserve it. And before you bitch and complain and cuss at the universe, you need to cuss at yourself first and get your ass back into a space in which you're moving forward and what it is that you know. It's like you got to jump in your bag right now. Like you got to understand also where we're at right now in terms of like in in, in terms of the world and in, in, in terms of uh I want to say in a spiritual sense, like, because what's going on right now, it is a lot of spiritual warfare going on. So what, what's happening right now is everybody is getting very, it's, it's being very cut and dry about who's who. Are you your higher self or are you still, are you on your, on your path to your lower self? Are you in that space where you're not actually ascending? Cause that's the, that's the thing I've been saying from the beginning of this year, when, when, um, the, the calendar year, when it turned from 2022 to 2023, 2023 account, uh, numerology wise comes out to seven, the, the, the gematria of seven or the numerology of seven, right? It's like when we look at seven, it's even the shape, it's it's an angle pointing upward. It's the number of uh, information of messages from a higher source, quote unquote. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to say high or lower because these, these, these are, um, you know, things that are given to us to give us ideas, but they're not accurate as to what's really going on. So you'll be walking around here thinking there's something high up giving you information, but it's really just an allegory or something to, to give you a picture, but that picture isn't the point. You know what I'm saying? This is, um, I don't want to get too far into that, but you know, <clears throat> seven being a higher angle messages from a higher angle. This is why they say it's kind of like, um, symbolized through um angelic you know what i'm saying but again everything has an equal um opposite so the opposite of that angelic message would be a demonic message and all the an angel is is a high angle so a high angle would be an angle that comes from your higher chakra so this is something that's more predicated upon um you know things that detach you from your lower desires so lower desires would be things like um everything clinging to I mean, if you think sex, if you think like pleasure, if you think like uh, things that are rooted um, in your your pleasures, basically, uh, higher chakras be more intellectual pursuits. You know, the ideas that that separate you or or allow you to be in a in a in a to know yourself, basically. Lower ones put you in a space of needing needing others or needing. And ironically, you know, when we do talk about angelic themes and, and demonic themes and angelic and doing things on that tip it's it's 
even though it is separating you, it's more so just highlighting your individuality um, and as a reverse, because everything down here is in reverse, you know what I'm saying? We kind of got some artwork depicting depicting that, you know, shout out to Free, my girl. But for the most part, in the most point, for, uh, for the most part, when it comes to, you know, everything is in reverse down here. So a lot of the things that are separating you as far as your individuality, that's healthy in a spiritual sense. And, but it's like on a reverse sense, you knowing yourself puts you in a space where you can connect to others better. You know what I'm saying? The better you, you know yourself, the better you are able to actually engage in the world and relate. And that's what we're here to do. You know what I'm saying? But now when you look at the demonic aspect, you know, this on the surface looks like you trying to get buddy buddy with the next person. You being a lot of mix mixing and mi mingling. But a lot of times the reason why you're doing that is to be able to take or take advantage of or manipulate um, others. And, and that form of relating actually puts you in a space where you're actually way more separate. It's almost like you don't know your individuality. So you just try to get involved in everything, any and everything. But it's correlated based upon what you want out of the situation, expectations and stuff like that. And those type of connections never last this is why you see a lot of people get divorced later on in life because what they've connected on isn't actually a spiritual connection it's a connection based upon who had the resources or who had the look who had the thing that enticed them on a lower nature level so you know this is kind of getting deeper into to, to aspects that really deserve their own video but for the sake of this video it, it really is talking about so when we talk about 2023 being the year seven this is everybody at a point spiritually where we're deciding for ourselves whether or not we are following the path to our higher self aka being way more in touch with who we are and doing things in accordance to to our truth and and following along with those messages right or are we going down the path of lower natures and again i speak for on this as if there's no good or bad because even in that space there are times and situations in which that's necessary let's say you planted a whole bunch of bad seeds in your life and you're in a situation right now where you have to manipulate even if it comes down to robbing stealing you know god forbid killing you know what i'm saying i mean i'll say god forbid but it come down to like you, you just the reality of the situation and there's some times where like it's it's kind of like this because I'm not justifying it, right? I'm not saying oh you're doing these things, you're okay. I'm just saying that again, we can all agree that in some situations, you know, these different things happen, and it it's it's what what just happened. So like if you in these situations, because there's real people out there who be in situations where hey to feed my family, I gotta steal this, or I gotta manipulate this person, or I'm in a situation like even if you're in a situation, you gotta live on somebody's couch, and you gotta sweet talk to them, and and, and and you know what I'm saying like again when we start talking about those things and morally, morally we can start to go into a debate all we want, but the the truth of the matter is you know everybody's in a different situation and they got to do what they got to do you know again not saying it's right or wrong it's just you know how you curve it is how your spirit curve it that's up that's on you i'm not speaking on some moral shit where i'm saying oh this is right this is justifiable and this is wrong this is the you know what i'm saying mm -mm, i'm just saying you know and then of course there's things that don't that we can't you know what i'm saying that that's just unacceptable and stuff like that but again trying to stay trying to keep this video as clear as possible on the topic as far as mars being in virgo now but um that's important to note because even when we talk about seven seven is also the number of relations it's the seventh house you know relating and um harmony balance and this is the thing too because in all honesty you're not you're supposed to keep everything balanced everything needs to be in moderation so as much as you think you're angelic or doing things in your higher chakras you're still in the 3d you are still down here amongst other demons and stuff like that right people on demon time and stuff and things of that nature so you would be naive to think that you can move around here and not understand at least the natures of the individuals around you who may not have what you have may not see things how you see things and may be willing to go out and do things to you based upon what you have access to so it's about balance and understanding the two this whole year encapsulated is about balance in a sense but it's also about again that higher angle because if we are talking about the number the numerology right when we get to seven seven is the same as four and one 
and these are masculine type energy so this year is about making those decisions making those masculine jumps even if you are in a female body you, you know you have a percentage of masculine energy and even in, in in this case it's you choosing still having to make that decision for yourself as far as where you're gonna go now here's the thing speaking of decision and indecision that's another aspect that Mars and, and, and Libra can bring about that can make the time a little bit confusing. See, if you've been on the track of planting bad seeds, you're going to have a lot of indecision when it comes to your passion. Because here's the thing, from the beginning of the spring till now, we are supposed to be in the springtime when it came to Aries, um, Taurus, and Gemini. We needed to be experimenting with who we are. We needed to be encapsulating our true self, right? And back then, we we quite we 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 had hints of who we are, but it was really about initiating a new perspective on it. So Aries brought a new awareness, and from that new awareness, we were just testing things out. But we had to have courage in that area. If you if you go back to my videos at that time, I spoke a lot about what was going on. And the main themes was, I mean, even I think the um, we had uh, Jupiter in Aries at that time. And Jupiter in Aries, again, it was about having courage on your own individual journey. A lot of individual energy and being able to be willing to separate and go on on your path without any kind of preconceived idea of where you were going just the courage alone and then it turned into uh tourist season where we started to get this different transition into needing to stabilize these things needing to add value to our new perspective and that can only come from actually living it actually doing it getting out and putting our boots on the ground type of vibe then it became gemini from that value we had something to talk about that created a, a, a connection and then we went into cancer and cancer we were battling between whether or not we needed to share these things or what to keep private but we were battling really with our comfort zones and getting over certain emotional vulnerabilities and figuring out how to take these vulnerabilities and put them on the forefront for them to be something to be um again not so vulnerable about on a weekend but something to actually be strong in something that we could take power over and be like yo this is it and then that was the transition from that opposition where where with, with pluto pluto being in capricorn and deals with power control and and we and we needed to take power control over our emotional state and needed to feel comfortable with the uncomfortable and that's been the theme this whole time comfortability in the spaces that we are the most uncomfortable and that led up to a lot of this leo energy and like i was saying before mars was here first create and we had to set the stage at a time we were looking at this like damn i don't want to get embarrassed though the sun came in and then we started to deal with, with with the need to remember we had like two new moons in cancer um and then we we had to really push ourselves to move past that energy and and show up in ways that um you know just just show up for ourselves you know in ways so that became the theme and that's where like that's where we're <gasps> coming from as far as mars energy see that's that's where the significance comes from when it when we're talking about mars because mars had to do that first mars had to set the stage and had to do it in accordance to what we were passionate about from that energy, Mars went into the Virgo, right? And we went through that new moon area. And then again, in that new moon, this is where things are significant because since Mars was the first planet, like I like to look at charts and transits, um, just the way I go about interpreting them is I look at, I, I just, I use a lot of um, common sense, you know what I'm saying? It's like going outside and looking at nature for what it is and understanding how it flows based upon what you're looking at, you know what I'm saying? What you're looking at and being able to interpret it from a very, you know, simplistic way. So what I look at when I'm looking at these trends is Mars being the trailblazer. Mars has been setting the tone regardless, you know what I'm saying? Or, or in general, you know, Mars has been ahead of every, every, every all the other planets for the most part. So Mars being the, you know, setting the stage when the sun came in, the sun's job was to follow up with what Mars experimented on. And a lot of that looked like, so when it came to the sun, we needed to act on these things. You know, we needed to act on them without any, you know, we had to use a lot of that passion that we initiated, Mars being in the top to, okay, now we already set the stage as far as our passions. Now all that's left is to show up and show out. 
And that's really what the son did. Of course, easier said than done. I'm, I'm gonna start flipping that around and just be like, either easier done than said, because you know, when it really comes down to it, really jumping into the energy is a lot better than sitting back and contemplating whether or not it's gonna work out for you. And I think that's where a lot of people get mixed up and things of that nature. But I, I mean, again, the, the nature of the saying is just saying that yeah, we could talk about it all day, but to do it is, is a whole nother step. But I just wanna, I wanna flip that too. But that's again another another conversation. But for the most part, we had to fill that in with the sun and understand what that meant as far as an awareness to jump into that and actually act out those energies. Because again, passions, a lot of times you see we filter passions through our sun sign, but it takes us to act on those things in, in our own individual way in order for those things to come to fruition. So a lot of times that that, that might have been what a, that's what a lot of people experience a lot of times because we could be passionate about a bunch of stuff. But what we actually choose to do with our body and our actions and our awareness and be pay attention to, that's a whole different conversation. So anyway, our attention might have been on the embarrassment more than the um, working on the ability or doing what it is that we said we were going to do when we were plotting and planning. Now, coming into Mars moving into Virgo, like I was saying before, we was organizing our, our passions and putting them into place. Um, but again, you might have been able to get away with not actually expressing yourself, not actually showing what you're doing. And like I was saying before, now that the sun is in Virgo, it's all about receipts. It's all about what we actually know to be a fact based upon what you've shown. And a lot of people, again, if you passed up on those opportunities to show up and do your thing, then nobody's going to know what it is you do. And no, you're not going to have enough evidence results to show. And that's where we're at right now with all this earth in the sky. We need results in order to give a frame of reference. So if you haven't been doing anything, you haven't been putting in work, there's not going to be anything of value to show for it. And a lot of that Mars being in Leo was squaring of the energy in Taurus where we had to learn how to bring bring our individual value to what we were passionate about and expand on it as far as understanding the inner workings on a practical level of how we could bring that to the surface. Now with with now that Mars was trying in Uranus and Jupiter, we were expanding on our passions as far as learning new things that applied to it being realistic. And we were applying our individuality as well and changing things about our passions that didn't quite align with ourselves. And um, that was happening kind of in the background. Now with Mars and Libra, it's all about, see, you doing that work makes your passion a lot more relatable at this moment in time, makes it to where uh, not only is it relatable, but other people are aware of what it is you do. And you're able to have a better way of not only, you know, making it something that people want to be a part of, people want to support, but you're also able to use your passions and what you're involved in to help and support others. And that's where the balancing act comes. So Mars and Libra as a transit, it's really all about this balancing act, you know, and, and a lot of times, like, this is why they say Libra is like karmic and, and dealing with Saturn and an exalted state because, what you've been putting out is what you're going to get back. So if you haven't actually been participating with what other people got going on, especially with a, a, a energy like Venus in Leo, for instance, where it's all about um, expressing love and appreciation. Now, it's been in retrograde, but you got to ask yourself, have you been showing love and support or have you been too consumed with who's not loving and supporting you? in a self-centered way because now these themes are coming back up so even with these retrogrades going on now like mercury currently in retrograde it's a situation where you know we're dealing with a lot of situations where we're looking at ourselves and we we are having to come to grips with certain mistakes that we made based upon us just not quite knowing better either not knowing ourselves and not knowing what we were trying to do um this time around though we're given new opportunities to do new things but it's like we have to apply a whole new way of looking at it in order to and that's the test the test is can you apply a new way to look at this thing this new thing but use your old situations and old past stuff as a reference on what to do better this time you know what i'm saying because a lot of these things that are coming back as far as retrogrades really are just looking at old things that didn't work but now the opportunity is open once again so we're actually given a, a chance to move forward and i think that's that has a lot to do with the fact of how many things are in retrograde because see at times every every time and point in 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 um 
I want to say in history, but point in these transits, every everything has a different theme. We experience the same energies, but it's always a different theme going on in the air. And the, the theme in the air at the current moment is set on this new world. So there is no going back. And, you know, with the amount of retrogrades, it's kind of just, it's actually, lay, it's giving you a foundation to lay a new direction for yourself or to pursue a new direction for yourself. So all these new things that you're having access to, it's the retrogrades are putting it right in front of your face to say, hey, this is your chance to do something new. You know what I'm saying? And you can take what you went through in the past that didn't work and where you where you sold yourself short in order to create a new path for you in this in this experience. And, um, you know, but you have to be willing to see where um, those old mistakes, old mentalities actually kept you held back. You know what I'm saying? But it's not so much a situation of old things coming up exactly how they were for you to either jump in and jump out. Because that's a lot of times how retrogrades play out. It's like, are you going to jump into the same thing or not? You know, now it's more like, no, this is a new thing. But um, how are you going to approach this that plays or improves upon how you used to go about doing things. And it's kind of a testament to just see if your new self is activated, if you're actually going to pursue things in that new perspective. But that's retrogrades. Um, and I'll, I'll make a video talking about Uranus finna go retrograde. But for the most part, you know, we're talking about Mars. So when it comes to our passions and what we're gonna have to do is switch gears into making it more um, able to re relate and, and able to be matched with other people and, and being able to initiate these things. See, that's the thing too. No, you can't sit around in your space and think that everybody's supposed to flock to you. You need to either create something that gets people involved or you yourself need to be the initiator in what, whatever project you want to collaborate with other people on. You know, this ain't a time to be um, egotistical either. And that might play out a little bit See, you got to look at the opposition too. Mars is going to oppose Chiron and the North Node. So here's the thing. Our spiritual path might feel distant from what we're passionate about at the moment. We need to create balance because what it is, is we need to get familiar with having people around us. We need to get familiar with relating what we do. Um, and, and, and a lot of that, even when it, when we talk about buzzwords at the moment, like boundaries, for instance, people is, talk all day, you know, it's always buzzwords going around at certain times and, and in, in the year and stuff like that. So the buzzword right now is boundaries, but what does that actually mean? See a boundary is something as far as you impose on yourself in order to create, to, to hold yourself accountable and to keep your integrity. A boundary is not something you need to impose on someone else to follow in order to make you satisfied. So when it comes to this, it's about self-respect and being able to know yourself and know where you're trying to take your life. Right. That's like a lot of the North Node and Aries being able to stand on your own while the Mars conjuncting the South Node when it comes to the South Node is understanding the importance, though, of relating and how important it is to be around the right relationships. But you won't be around the right relationships unless you're. 10 toes down on your own boundaries. But again, boundaries are what you impose on yourself. So it's a certain allowance and ability to let go of anything that you see that isn't in accordance to your boundaries and not going backwards on those things, not allowing what you want, a desire, what you might get or expect from a situation, um, not allowing that to make you switch up on yourself aka put on a different face aka you know lie to yourself and others that you're involved with just because you're trying to get something out of it you know right now you need to be raw you need to be raw with who you are and let that fly let that sit on the table first and anybody who chooses to sit with you after that is who belongs at your table but the people who get their stuff up and leave you can't be upset about what hey. they choose to do with themselves What's up? let me see Okay. It's a story. Yeah, I guess. It's a puzzle game? No. Yeah, I think it's a puzzle game. It's not a puzzle game. It says puzzle game. I know you can't read, but it says my dog puzzle game. P U Z Z A I E. Oh. Okay, I see. I see, Dave. So when it comes to, um, you know, everything that's going on, that's that's really what it comes down to, you know, needing to stay down on your task, but not allowing, not allowing um, 
you know, the fear of what you might do that might hurt somebody else's feelings, not getting into your head about, you know, all that kind of things. And again, Mars and, and Libra, it, 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 it's Mars is at a state where it doesn't feel comfortable. It's like you're not going to feel comfortable standing up for yourself if you're not on the right perspective you know what i'm saying because if and that's going to lead to planting bad seeds aka mixing and mingling with people you have no business around just for the sake of what you think you might get out of it and you think that's providing balance but it's really creating imbalance in your life where now you're just further into a situation where you're not around like-minded individuals and it's all because you didn't speak up you didn't initiate your thought and make that something to be respected you know what i'm saying and that's what it comes down to as well with uh saturn influence signs you know it's about respect as well uh mars is going to be in conjunct jupiter and uranus again mars is in a state where we're gonna misunderstand our individual our individuality when it comes to um our passions and that's okay for the moment you know you keep that intact again it's just a misunderstanding so the second you feel as though you're not quite being yourself or that you because see what's going to happen is you might be so accustomed to doing things on your own that it makes you a little uncomfortable you might feel like you're losing your identity by allowing somebody else to either help support or share passions with you and at this moment in time we actually need to learn more of the value of participating with another individual and what that can do for us you know and there's an opportunity here because you have the mar you have mars and libra but you also have venus still in leo now venus is still retrograde so again it might be difficult to understand and take those opportunities but again if you're able to look past your past and, and understand that for what it what what it is, and you're able to actually, and like I said before, get out of the need for a self-centered gratification of uh, uh, what is it? What do they call it? Um, gratification, self-valid. I, I forgot what the what it, what it is. Y'all know what I'm trying to say though. Um, instead of seeking that, if you can actually direct that energy and, and reform it into you being willing to give love because you love yourself enough then you create an opportunity where again a lot of these new pa these passions that you have they can be supported and um carried out gracefully you know what i'm saying and they could be harmonious and there could be a lot of partnership being able to do things that you weren't able to do before real quick talking about the opposition to Chiron again this is where the majority of our mistakes are going to come from whenever we're too passionate and say fuck it I'm just going to do it on my own not the time for that you know it's going to feel like the time for that but it's not the time for that a lot of that energy is coming from you in panic mode so you're trying to cling on to what you know and you're most familiar with which is probably just doing shit by yourself and that's not where we're at right now um Mars is also going to square um Chiron later in his transit. So what this is, is a buildup. See, this is a test as well to see how well we work with others. The better you're able to work these relationships and smooth them over when it comes to your passions, this is going to create a, a learning process where it's going to help you adjust yourself as far as positioning and status. That's where Pluto is at right now in Capricorn. So it's the transformation of your status through how well you can conduct your relationships regarding things you're passionate about, how well you can support others people, other people's passions, and how well you're, you can make your passion something to be um, a team effort or a partnership effort. Um, and then we also got... Um, Mars in conjunct Saturn and Neptune. So misunderstanding how our passions apply to our dreams and also misunderstanding this is illusions we've had about our passions, about maybe we believe that we had to do it all ourselves. Maybe we believe different things will work out for us and they didn't. So this is kind of fighting through those misunderstandings too. But, you know, both misunderstandings share Venus. So you know, we have to have this appreciation for where we are right now and who's around us, who you are relating to. Look at that as something to be grateful for and, and find ways to appreciate that without getting too much in your head, even if they are annoying you at the moment, the people you're partnered up with pissing you off and stuff like that. Don't take that so much to heart that you lose the, the understanding and value of what you actually have. You have people around you that's special. Not everybody has that. And you know, the people who don't have anybody will be the first to tell you, man, I wish I had somebody, even if they're trying to put on a front in the back of everybody's mind as a person, you know, this is what you, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, you want to, you know, you know, you want people around you, you know, and you can't do anything without teamwork. You know what I'm saying? You can't make any dream or reality without other individuals who are invested in it. 
So even if you wanted to be on your own, it just doesn't work like that in life. And the better you get come to grips with that, the better this transit will be and better your life will improve. Because people who have people around them and have friends and have, you know, relations and things of that nature, these are the people who are who get the more more out of life. You know, and again, I understand if you're an individual who just don't manifest good relationships and good connections, it's all about the relationship to yourself. And that's the whole thing. If you find yourself alone at this moment in time, especially even especially when the sun gets into Libra, it's about relating to yourself better so that you can pop out and you can manifest those better opportunities for relationships to materialize that actually coincide with who you are and where you're going boom you know and again mars and libra is a great time for distractions so don't get distracted based upon who you're around you know um you could be around the wrong crowd and therefore your passions and what you have as far as motivation is directed towards the wrong things whether that's being around the wrong people that take your ass right to jail or being a, being involved or passionately connected to people who put you into a procrastinated state take you 10 steps back or you know whatever you want to make that look like it's just you really have to be mindful of who you're around and you have to make the distinction now whether or not and see a little bit of this virgo energy is good for that because you'll be the able to analyze and look at the details of who it is that's around you and whether or not they're actually somebody who you can get money with get get right with get status with get get material whatever it is you're trying to get because not everybody's trying to get those material things but are these people you can do what you want to do with and you have to be real and if it's not then start making your exit plan and that exit plan don't gotta look like the most harsh thing in the world but it needs to look like you changing and changing you know what i'm saying switching up doing doing what you need to do for you and not being so worried about how they might feel about it because at the end of the day it's your life fuck how anybody else feel you know you don't got to be a dickhead about it you don't got to be rude you ain't got to be um ignorant or naive it's just you choosing to do you you know what i'm saying and that's most important and um yeah so that's the major alignments that the mars is going to be making for the most part of course things are going to switch and we'll talk about those as we go through other transits y'all know how we do and if you're new here you finna learn soon so make sure you like subscribe share this with somebody who you believe can help this or who has this alignment because there might be some gems in there that they can take and improve their life with so you know and for the most part much love and i'll catch you on the next one peace